Hey everybody, Greg Swanson with WarriorMindCoach.com. Just wanted to thank you for stopping by to take a look at the Mental Strength Coaching Certification Program. Before I get into some information, just wanted to share with you a little bit what my motivation was behind developing the course. In my 25 plus years in the fitness industry and 5 plus years in coaching, I realized that there's a big distinction between telling somebody what to do and coaching them how to do it. And it all involves understanding how the client thinks and understanding how to break through that thinking, whether it's an athlete, a client, a salesperson, whatever it is, there's a certain precepts that they have. And when you're able to communicate with them effectively, they will get that change. Most fitness certifications and continuing eds and other aspects work more on the physical. Here's a new routine to do, here's some, something else to do. But if you don't understand the client's resistance to change and it's an unconscious resistance and you just tell them to do something, they're not going to get that lasting change. So in this mental strength coaching certification program, we go through the uh, the coaching part of it. How to coach, what is coaching? We'll go through the, the, the mindset, how does a person think and how to get through that and then we'll go into the mental strength part and help you develop goals and, and, and ways to help that client break through those resistance. So with that, I'm I'm going to shift over to the PowerPoint and get going on that. So the mental strength coaching certification really is all about developing peak performance in sport, in fitness, and in life. The information that you're going to learn through this program, you're going to be able to apply to all aspects of your life. You know, today more and more is being asked of the trainers and the coaches to help their clients. You know, clients and athletes are bringing more of their life to the sessions. They're bringing in their internal states, their moods, their emotions. I'm not feeling good today. I'm mad at this or, or whatever their mood or emotion is. And, and they're bringing in their external world with them too. If they're working, they bring in their work. They had a fight with their boss. They had a fight with this. And they're bringing in their family. that uh, Things aren't going well with the family life. And, they're, and they bring in a whole bunch of other things with them, right? They bring in um, about nutritional advice. They, they, they get very personal with with what's going on in their life with the trainers and coaches, even to a point of relationships. And so how does a trainer and coach address all these challenges? Well, many of us will go to workshops and seminars to learn the latest and greatest workouts, the new systems or the new tools to use to help our clients, as well as to differentiate us from other trainers and coaches. We'll also try to help our clients by giving them tips advice and, and information as best as we can. But at some point, these stop being effective. And then we blame the client for not being committed to their change. And really doing this and having this type of thinking is like trying to teach trigonometry to a fifth grader. If they can't get it, they're not committed. Well, it's not the fifth grader's fault. It's not the client's fault at some levels. Yes, I agree that at some point they need to put in the work, but the program here is about helping you develop that communication a little bit more effectively. So it's not that the client or athlete isn't committed. It's about the trainer or coach doesn't have the tools to communicate effectively to bypass the limiting beliefs and thinking that the client and athlete have. If they're not making progress, if they're complaining, if they're doing something, there is a blockage in their mental capacity. Not that they're, they're, they're slow in that regard, but they have these unconscious beliefs. And then, you know, if all you're doing is giving them instructions, don't eat this or do this exercise and just tough it out, Basically, you're training your clients just like a pet dog. So this is where the mental strength coaching certification comes in. You know, we all know what separates the elite athletes from the other athletes. At some level, the physical abilities are the same. But what really separates them is their mindset, specifically their mental strength and their mental toughness, right? So... What are you doing as a trainer and a coach to develop your mindset and mental strength? And with all things being equal, that is the training and knowledge of human and exercise physiology, what makes you different from other trainers and coaches? 
if the difference in elite athletes is mindset and not physical ability, what are you doing to enhance your mindset and mental strength to set yourself apart from the rest? And sure, it's great to read books, go to seminars, listen to audios, but without the proper education as to how to apply this knowledge, it's simply just information. But what, what's more important, how are you developing your client's mental strength? In the mental strength coaching certification, you'll learn about personal coaching, how the mind works, mental strength tools and skills. So just want to go over real briefly what coaching is. Many people think coaching is what they see on a professional team. The coach is on the sideline telling players what to do, um, yelling at them, giving them instructions, and that's what everybody thinks coaching is. Coaching is not about that. Coaching is an interactive dialogue with the client or the athlete to determine where their mind is, where their beliefs are, what, what's going on. And really, all the, every client, every athlete knows what's holding them back. But at some level, they're either afraid to say it or they don't want to say it. So coaching brings that out. It will bring out those barriers. And what coaching is not is telling, directing. It's not therapy. We don't go back and you don't go back into the past and talk about childhood problems. But coaching is about going from point A to point B the most effective and efficiently way possible. And point B being the future. So the second part is we need to look at the mind. How does the mind work? And I don't go into a lot of detail. I mean, I go into detail, but not the excruciating detail of how the mind works. There's enough information in this program that will allow you to develop an understanding of listening to what the client says, hearing what they say, hearing what they don't say, and that is a reflection of their thinking. So when their mind works, they are thinking. So as they are thinking, you're going to be able to know what's getting in their way, what's preventing them from uh, taking responsibility for their own results. And this goes, again, with anything, with, with an athlete, with a client, with a salesperson, whatever it might be. And in there, you're also going to know, you're going to be able to understand what makes this person think. What, why do they think this way? Have you ever said that? Why does somebody think like that? You're going to be able to understand it. And when you understand it, you're going to be able to coach them through that process. So first you have to have the tools to coach them. Then you understand how they think. Then you're going to be able to coach them through that. Then lastly, you're going to be, take a look at the mental strength tools and skills. How do you shift a person from external motivation, which is almost the weakest motivation out there, to internal motivation, which is the strongest. And with the mental strength skills and tools, you're also going to, how do you help somebody break through their comfort zone on a regular basis so the new comfort zone or the new uncomfortable zone becomes the new comfort zone and you keep pushing them up and up and up. And this section goes over the four aspects that Navy SEALs use to develop their mental toughness as well. So we want to take a look at wants versus needs. If you want your clients to train with you because they want to, not because they have to, you need to understand how to bypass their filters and effectively communicate and coach with them. Understand that some people have to train with you. They are overweight or they are assigned to you as an athletic tra trainer. But what makes the difference is when a client wants to work with you, they will stay with you. And that's what's going to set you apart from other trainers and coaches. So some of the benefits from understanding how to shift a client's mindset is the client's going to respect and appreciate you. And when they have reached their goals, they're going to stay with you, not leave you like, okay, I've reached my goal. I'm going, I'm going, I'm done. I know how to do it. And your retention rate is going to go up and your revenue is going to go up. And because they've reached their goals and they want to train with you, they will refer their friends to you. Your client base will go up and your revenue will go up. And in addition, you're going to have the skills to add a, quote, life coaching package to your service offerings, which will allow your revenue to go up as well. And you're also going to get the mental strength tools and skills to create lasting change in your clients 
and in your life as well. This is just not about the clients, but it's about you as well. So please take some time to read over the site. If you haven't yet, request the free ebook, The Essentials of Mental Strength. Um, then if you still have some questions before you join, please use the contact me section on the site. And I really look forward to you joining us um, on the Mental Strength Coaching Certification Team. And just remember, whatever you or your clients want out of life lies on the other side of mental resistance.